Well, the much-anticipated Nigerian presidential election is just nine days away, and concerns are growing that many of the citizens displaced by violence in the Northeast may not be able to cast their votes. Uh, there are indications that Nigeria may extend a deadline for the distribution of voter ID cards uh, for vote uh, beyond next week, uh, rather next Sunday. But there are no considerations of delaying the election. President Goodluck Jonathan faces ex-military ruler Muhammadu Buhari in the February 14th election and there are grave doubts over whether voting can happen in swathes of the northeast overrun by rebels. As they are mostly opposition strongholds, Buhari stands to lose out the most. Boko Haram militants are stepping up their campaign of violence ahead of the election. The military repelled an attack by insurgents on the outskirts of the northeast's main city of Maiduguri on Sunday, their second assault in a week on a city they hope to make the capital of a breakaway Islamist state. Addressing journalists in Nigeria's capital city, Abuja, the electoral commissioner for the Independent Nigerian Electoral Committee, INEC, said internally displaced persons will be able to cast their votes in centers that will be set up close to the camps. And we don't encourage voting in IDP camps because there's a lot more people outside the camps than in the camps. So what we, the, the team that uh, recommended the IDP vote in the committee that came up with the modalities recommended we find a center near the camps but not necessarily within the camps, identified as a local government voting area and people, so that people outside the camps could also vote. Before now, the law stated that people must go home if they wanted to participate. But for many displaced voters, the idea of going back to their home constituencies, as they legally must do in order to cast their ballots, is too harrowing to contemplate. We've made preparations for IDP voting at the states where there are IDP camps. But uh, I cannot tell you the exact number of IDPs that collected their cards. But I, tell, I told you the percentage of voters that collected their cards in, the, in Borno State, which was 56%, and about 70% in Yobe State. Because Yobe didn't have the crisis of IDPs as much as Borno State. The Electoral Commission also said that Nigeria may delay its February 14th presidential elections if the number of voter ID cards INE can distribute by February 8 is too low. Zachary made it clear that no decision had been taken. Well, for more perspective on the Nigerian presidential, presidential election, I'm joined live via Skype from Nashville, Tennessee, by Professor Moses Ochono of Vanderbilt University. Professor Ochono, welcome to Africa 54. And uh, we're hearing two different voices. There are those who want this election to go ahead as scheduled. Others are saying, no, 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 there should be some uh, delay. Uh, why are those uh, voices different? Why, why do those who want it to continue as scheduled want it to be so? I think on the one hand, you have people who are concerned that with such shoddy preparations for the elections, uh, if the elections were to hold, uh, it will be very difficult to argue for the credibility of the elections and, its, uh, and their outcomes. But on the other hand, uh, I, there's no appetite, really. If you survey the country, there's very little appetite for delay because people just want to have the elections and get it over with and go on with their lives. Now, uh, the, uh, there's a lot of tension in the country already, and to delay the election would be to intensify this tension and the likelihood of trouble. Nobody wants that. But uh, one would think that uh, one thing that will cause tension is uh, millions of people being unable to cast their votes because they have been displaced or because they are under threat. Absolutely. Uh, in the Northeast, certainly there are problems, there are areas that are under Boko Haram's control. Elections cannot hold in those areas. But, uh, but you also have uh, the IDP camps. Uh, and so the, the challenge is for the Electoral Commission to figure out a way to get uh, ballot papers and voters' cards to the people in the IDP camps. And in the areas of the Northeast that are not under Boko Haram to conduct elections in those areas. Because otherwise, uh, the, credibility of, the credibility of the election would be in doubt and the outcomes would, be, would certainly to, would be questioned. And, and, and actually, do you think or do you fear that uh, uh, the opposition could actually use that to dispute the result of the February 14th election? 
Absolutely, and uh, it would it would be on sound legal ground to do so, because the Electoral Act uh, says clearly that elections have to take place all over the country simultaneously for the election to be valid. So the opposition uh, certainly has raised some concerns that the Northeast is where it expects to do very well. Uh, at least two of those states, the states in the Northeast, are governed by APC members, members of the mm -hmm. opposition. So, you know, uh, the, the position uh, has a very sound uh, basis to suspect that if elections don't hold in those areas, the credibility of the elections uh, will certainly be, uh, and the outcome w uh, would be, could be questioned. And especially if he doesn't win, then of mm -hmm. course it has uh, a basis to question the overall exercise. Well, such a dicey situation. Uh, Professor Chenu, thank you very much for your sharing your perspectives with us. Thank you for having me. Well, Professor Moses Ochono of Vanderbilt University joining us from uh, Tennessee, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh